Hey, 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 welcome BS Friday. Mark Naked, Willie, Dave Cooper in the house. Guess what, Mark? It is another Friday, and we have traveled across the wonderful Atlantic Ocean today to bring some people that are not only talking about building science, but they are talking about it in a very technical and detailed way. And we're going to go through some presentations that they have done and show that to you, which is going to be a lot of fun. How are you, my friend? Happy Friday, Dave Cooper Live. Great to see you, Dave, on all these wonderful formats, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And why do we go to Twitch, Mark? Well, one, you're so creative to target the youth. But but uh, the other reason is this incredible gentleman by the name of Greg Ugaldi has spearheaded a campaign uh, to bring the youth into uh, build the building sector via Twitch. God bless his heart. Yeah, I love it. Love it. We always love it when NAHB and Greg Ugaldi join us, especially from Twitch. I believe he's watching most days. All right, let's get into it, everybody, at Dave Cooper Live. We are bringing you the people and the processes that are building our better. Our guests and topics include experts in building systems to building science, building codes, and the tech used to build it better. And Mark, you have outdone yourself again today. We have some wonderful people on the show, and they not only do the things that we're going to talk about today, but they have built systems for different parts of the industry, catalogs on how to build better, regardless of your construction type. Right, Mark? So, so Dave, their enthusiasm on this topic is uh, is indicative of the of the of the last thirteen months that you've pledged towards the industry. Right, I, I can hear it today. Um, and, and, and when you think about the momentum of our past bringing us to today, that's very similar to our friends at A. Proctor. Since the 1600s, they've been, they've been working, collaborating, and harnessing the knowledge of those yeah. around them and delivering them to greater communities. That's, that, that's a long time. And, uh, and boy, if I don't enjoy what they put forward, I've, I think I've attended almost all of their webinars. I believe there's, there's two that are still on my list. Um, I, 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 I'm thankful that they're available to watch more than once because what you find, it's like a good uh, movie, right? You go through it, and the second time, you're able to pick up on even more details and their level of explanation is welcoming and uh and uh i'm just thrilled dave just thrilled yeah it's it's gonna be a lot of fun to have them on the show and i have to tell you they don't look like they've been around since the 1600s i mean th th nobody looks that old to me man well um must be the water over there it's passing it forward very well played dave and by the way my video is not up i have no idea if i'm in the right spot of the screen just being real uh, and I hope my audio is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're doing. You know what? I'm just thinking. Move to the right about an inch. Perfect. You're dead center. All right. Love it. Love it. Hey, as we say on uh, on this show, and for all of you waiting to come on to this show, it is live. If it can go wrong, it will. And typically, something does happen, and we just have a good time with it. Today's all about bringing you the science behind building. And, and talking about better ways of building and bringing people together. So why don't we hop into that into this without further ado, unless you got something you want to say? No, it's like it. well, everyone up. Um, I'll, I'll I'll say their names here. So it's the A Proctor Group, um, and and we're welcoming today uh, Pamela, Jeff, and Ian. Um, please please connect with them. Please reach out with to them after today's show. And during today's show, bring forward your questions. Could this group make a handle what you throw down? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How are you today? Hello, good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good yeah. Good. yeah. Good. Jeff, you're on mute, just so you know. So you have to <laughs> unmute yourself there, Jeff. So listen, outside of just having really great accents that everybody loves to listen to, to include myself, uh, by the end of this show, I'm hoping that I that I say some words. Uh, as, as, as proper as you say, the, I always say the proper English form, even if it's Scotland, right? So how about this, guys? We want to know everything about each and every one of you from the moment you were born to this very moment in time 
Do not leave out any of the good stuff from the hospital or Mark Willie's mother is going to call your mother and she'll get it out of her. I promise you she will get it out of her. So hopefully Mark's mom's watching today. I always wave to mom. All right. So Pam, you guys have a couple minutes each. So two minutes, Pam, two minutes, uh, Jeff, and then Ian, you can go, you can go next. So Pam, tell us all about yourself. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Yeah, I was uh, born uh, a child of the 70s, um, just about 20 miles from where I live now in Perth, um, sort of mid-Scotland, um, moved out here to Blairgowrie where the Proctor Group is um, based in 1980 and have stayed pretty much in this house ever since. So this is my parents' house. I stay here with them now because they're getting a little bit older. So we'll just hopefully keep my mum out of the picture for the rest of the evening. So studied at uh, the local school here and university and, and uh, high school. Went on to study architectural technology and building surveying at university. Took a couple of years out, worked in a cinema before being taken on in 2001 as a receptionist at Proctor's. Um, got the opportunity to cover maternity leave um, the following year in the technical team and Ian hasn't been able to get rid of me since. So that's uh, me just celebrated my 19th year with uh, with the company, almost 19 full years within technical. And uh, yeah, really love it. It's a great challenge. Always learning, always, always, always learning. And uh, in my spare time, I uh, do a little bit of Amdram, a bit of public speaking, and uh, basically just spend the rest of the time cuddling the dogs. So I will warn you, they may pop up and scream. I love it. I love it. Cuddling the dogs. I love dogs. Cuddling the dogs. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, Jeff, you are up. Go, my friend. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to be here. Um, so I'm I'm um, the, the international account manager, and I was born in England. That's about as international as I get in the Proctor Group. Um, I was born in a place called Rugby in Warwickshire, where the game uh, rugby originated from, and uh, moved up to Scotland when I was six, um, educated there, and uh, for, as an early child, um, I, I always wanted to be either a long distance runner or an architect, um, and so I decided to plumb for being an architect. Um, I did the first year of university and didn't enjoy it at all. Um, so I've worked as a draftsman for, for most of my working career, um, technical background, um, and I had an opportunity um, during a recession about 11 years ago um, for, to, to cover maternity leave for uh, one of the, the, the Proctor daughters, um, and I've been, I've been with the company ever since. Um, my uh, experience, I've been very blessed to travel um, many wonderful places around the world, um, seeing different types of construction technology, uh, meeting different people, so it's been a real, um, you know, a real wonderful experience. And so, just adding to this wonderful experience today, I do love North America. That was the first place I visited um, when I was working with the Proctors. Um, and uh, as far as my uh, hobbies, I'm happy getting out and about. Obviously, kind of been locked down for the last year and a bit, um, and I've got four children, so they keep me more than busy. So, I love it. Uh, yeah, four children. Good for you. I know what three are like, so I can imagine. I can imagine four. Well, I actually have four. You know, we got we 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 had some animals and some things like that. I don't know if that counts, but whew, I don't know. <laughs> four is a lot. You're outnumbered big time. All right, Ian. Ian, you are up. Let's hear it, man. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ian Pennington. I'm the technical director of the Proctor Group. Um, I was born in Edinburgh. Uh, in the 70s, early 70s. Uh, I've been a bit of a nomad uh, during my former years with my family, uh, moving from uh, town to town within the borders region. Then uh, when I left school, I went to Edinburgh University, uh, Napier University, did an HND at uh, uh, Napier. Then went on to do my honours degree in building engineering. Uh, then I came to Blair Gowrie, got a job in Proctor's, uh, which was just going to be temporary while the 1992 recession was. Um, and then I would go back to Edinburgh. Um, but as things have transpired, I'm still in Proctor's here nearly 30 years later. Um, love Proctor's. Uh, as Pam says, we're always learning new products. We're always looking for new products. 
new ideas, innovation is very important to us. We've got good customers, good transfer of information with our customers. Um, so we love it. Um, in my spare time, I play golf now. I used to play rugby, but I was a, a different shape then. Um, and now uh, I, I enjoy my pint in the, in the pub on a Friday night. Um, but I can't do that just now. I love it. You're right. You're right. So rugby, what position did you play in rugby? Uh, I was a winger. Oh, um, yeah, me too. Love it. Yeah, most people think uh, when you look at me now that I, I was a prop, but I, I was a winger. Uh, but I was a different shape then. I love it. I love it. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll all get back to the pubs real soon. What do you think, Mark? You ready for the pubs? Uh I I, uh, I think the pubs are ready for us, <laughs> um, and 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 bless their hearts for what they do. Right, uh, it's one of the reasons that things like this work out so well, is because we all we all strive for that camaraderie, um, the the intersection of our professional abilities and the growth of our relationships depend on the camaraderie, and. We would all be remiss if we didn't include that the conversations in the pub are often more detailed and often more forgotten than that of the conference room. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, listen, everybody, if you are out there, we are gonna get into these presentations. If you have a question, please put a Q in front of your question so it's easy for us to find in the show notes as we're scrolling through, as people are commenting. There's a lot of conversation, uh, Pam, Ian, and Jeff, that happens uh, in the banner side of my screen. So the Q actually helps a question stand out and I'm not having to read everybody going back and forth on each other's conversation. I love that point, David. I got one added thing. Besides putting the cue, because it's amazing, if you ever, Dave really needs to do it behind the scenes so people see what goes on back there. But if you really want your question asked, take a picture of your hat or your shirt or your coffee mug that you're sending to Dave, and I guarantee you, your question will be asked. That's right. That's right. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get more time on the show than most. We're always looking for new coffee mug shirts and uh, some A. Proctor stuff, some swag to give away. Maybe we can give away some A. Proctor swag on the show. But that's right, everybody. And if you're watching this right now, like, share, hit that like and share button right now so we can get the message out to all of our friends and family and everybody else that is not watching this right now. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's very, very very important. Uh, all right, Mark, where do we want to start? There's a lot of information. We got some videos for you today. And I think uh, they're very, they're, they're, the, the videos are, are very well exp explanations of air barrier systems, you know, and other systems. And I think this is, uh, this is going to be a big deal because we talk about it a lot, but we don't really get into the details visually with what you guys have put together. I totally agree, Dave. Why don't we hop on a video and at, at the point of the video that, that you're ready for a pause because you see the questions coming in, uh, you can you can tell that Ian and Pam and Jeff are ready to answer them. So we'll dive right in. Love it. Yeah, let me uh, let me see if I get the right one first here. And oh, I nailed it first time. Love it. <clears throat> All right, everybody can see that. Let's do this. I love this graphic, by the way, Jeff. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kira Proctor, and I'm the Managing Director of the A. Proctor Group Limited. Today, we're going to take a broad look at the physics and applications around construction membranes, what they are, where they are used, and how we can use their various physical properties to optimize the performance of the building envelopes. We'll begin with a look at the common applications for membranes in modern methods of construction and review some of the important aspects of building physics that apply in these situations. We'll then consider the types of membrane commonly used in these applications and the different performance characteristics and criteria we use for each. There are four primary applications for construction membranes. On the warm side of the building envelope, there are vapor control layers, membranes whose purpose is to prevent excessive moisture vapor from entering the building fabric, where it may lead to condensation problems. Vapor control layers will also block the passage of air if installed correctly. Vapor permeable or breather membranes are used on the cold side of the envelope. 
They provide secondary weather protection whilst remaining moisture neutral and not restricting the passage of vapour to the external environment. Roof underlays perform a similar secondary weather protection function to breather membranes, but not all underlays allow the passage of vapour. Impermeable underlays require moisture to be removed from the roof by ventilation. Vapour permeable underlays can reduce or eliminate this ventilation depending on their specific properties. Whether used in walls or roofs, vapour permeable underlays can be either airtight or air permeable, and we will discuss the effects of this later in the presentation. Finally, underneath the building, we have either damp proof membranes or gas barriers. A simple DPM prevents moisture from the soil entering the building through the foundations, while more specialised gas barrier systems facilitate construction on contaminated land by preventing the ingress of subsoil gases into the building. How and where the membranes are incorporated into a construction and which combinations of physical properties are most beneficial depends on a variety of factors. The primary consideration is the building occupants. The purpose for which the building is intended and the level of occupancy establishes the baseline hydrothermal criteria for the design. A building which is densely occupied with high moisture levels, such as a gym or a swimming pool, will require a different package of moisture control measures than a building such as a warehouse, where there is a lot of air movement and very low humidity. The temperature, humidity and moisture loads allow us to determine the vapour pressure associated with this specific application. Establishing a clear picture of the anticipated internal environmental conditions allows us to optimise the entire design from the building fabric to HVAC systems. This in turn can lead to reductions in both cost and complexity associated with over-specification. As well as the internal environment, we need to understand the external environmental conditions. Primarily, this means the weather and climate present where the building is located, but we can also include the soil conditions and any contamination present. Factors such as overshading and sheltering from geography or adjacent structures and solar gain should also be accounted for. With a complete understanding of the internal and external environmental conditions, we can then apply this knowledge to the design of the building itself. Each type and configuration of structure will behave differently and membranes can be applied in different ways. Without considering the performance of the entire building envelope holistically, important interactions between different systems may be overlooked or not adequately accounted for. This is compounded by many variations between as-designed and as-built performance, or designs which do not accommodate the realities of installation processes and schedules. Modern design workflows and systems such as building information modelling, or BIM, and digital twinning can go some way to simplifying the process, but any digital model is only as good as the information it is built on. So, in addition to a complete picture of the environmental conditions applied to the project, we also need to ensure we have a full set of physical data covering every part of the building envelope. As well as ensuring that the data set is complete, we must also verify that the test data used is appropriate to the construction and conditions under construction. Once we have all the relevant data at our disposal, we can then move in to consider the lower level physics at work in the building envelope, the interactions of heat, air and moisture. We'll use a simple timber frame wall as our example, but we'll consider what effects other construction methods have on these factors later in the presentation. When we think about the physics of heat and moisture in buildings, the start point of any consideration must be heat. The heat sources in the building envelope are a significant driver of air and moisture movement, and the energy associated with heating or cooling the insulated envelope represent the majority of energy use across the built environment in the UK. To account for the amount of heat loss through parts of a building, we use thermal transmittance of the element, or U-value. Every part of the construction, from insulation to bricks, contributes to reducing heat loss. These contributions are measured using the thermal resistance, simply put, a measure of how much insulation each part provides. The thermal resistance is calculated using the thickness of the material and its thermal conductivity, which measure how easily heat flows through that particular material. The inverse of the sum of these thermal resistances gives us the U-value which is the rate at which heat passes through the element. So, the lower the U-value, the better insulated the building. To this basic U-value, we can then apply corrections to allow for fixings, air gaps and ventilated spaces as necessary. 
Structural elements like studs or steelworks must also be accounted for, as these may not insulate as well as the layers which they pass through. This additional heat flow, known as cold bridging, can lead not only to higher overall U values, but also to cold spots throughout the structure. We can also take the U values for each part of the building, walls, roofs, windows, and so on, and use that along with the element areas to build up a picture of the entire building's energy performance. In this whole building model, we also use psi values to incorporate the effects of junctions in floor zones, which can also increase localised heat losses. U values do not increase and decrease in a linear fashion. So, if we want to improve the U values in our buildings, we need to add exponentially more insulation thickness. This approach will soon become impractical as the thickness cannot be accommodated. Another factor that can affect the heat loss is air leakage. Anyone living in an older house will be familiar with drafts around doors and windows, and probably also familiar with how much warmer houses feel when these drafts are blocked. As the improvements that can be gained from insulation thickness diminish, air tightness becomes increasingly important. Whilst air leakage at doors and windows is easily identified and remedied, the building fabric itself can also allow air movement. Gaps and cracks, for example, poorly fitted rigid insulation boards, can allow air to flow from heated to unheated spaces. This process is driven by both convection currents caused by heating the internal environment and by wind forces acting on the outside of the building. In addition to drawing heated air out and cold air in, this air leakage can also allow colder air to pass into the building fabric itself allowing colder areas to develop not only at the surface, but also within the fabric of the element itself. Understanding the temperature distributions of both the internal surface and within the fabric is important when we come to consider the effects of moisture movement. All right, Mark, I think this is a good time to let's take a few minute break here and let's have a little bit of uh, some shout outs and hellos to everybody. Uh, you're probably on mute, all of you. So hit your mute button to unmute yourself so we can have a conversation. But first, first, we should say hello to who is joining us in the audience today because people are taking time out of their day to spend it with us. And I think that's really, really cool. What do you think, Mark? I uh, I think our friend Convection and our friend Thermal Break was very apparent in those videos. So if our friends have first and last names out there, uh, come forward. But uh, I'm really over the moon about the Convection and the, and the Thermal slides we just saw. Um, if you're if if you're at any grade level and and you let that pass in here and you keep it in there and you use it, you're going to have a healthy, comfortable building. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's say hello to a few people. We got Damien Stapleton joining us. 42 degrees, Dublin, Ireland. What is happening, Damien? Glad to have you here today. We got Scott Farbman. Happy Friday, everyone. Louise Bazira. Happy Friday, Louise. Oh, here's somebody that shows up now and again, Shannon Pendleton. What is happening, Shannon? Great to see you today. Love it. She she put up a smiley face with a PH. How about that? I love it. I love it. All right, Raymond McGurk is Chris O'Kane in the house. Chris O'Kane. Who's Chris O'Kane? Raymond, help us out with that one. I don't know. Do you know? R Raymond used to work for Proctor's. Uh oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, well known to Proctor. Very Love good. It. Well, awesome. Glad you're joining us. Of course, we have Passel, Passive Purple in the house. Good old Adam White. Adam, we're still working on that factory so we can use the uh, gases from the goats as a natural resource to run the factory. <laughs> Adam has goats, right, Mark? <laughs> We, we we had an April we had an April Fool show and that was that was our that was one of our things we we we're going to use the methane gases from Adam's goats to run our next factory. I tell you, we had a rehearsal. So Ian and, and Pam and Jeff, we had a rehearsal, and I and I stressed to everyone to please keep a straight face while we while we do this run through. And when Dave and Jennifer came on, everyone was straight faced except for me. I completely <laughs> lost it. They delivered it hook, line, and sinker, and I had to move myself off camera. It was, uh, it was brilliant. It was April Fools with a PH. 
It was. It was. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun bringing a lot of people together in this industry that are that are really making a difference and pushing for change. All right. George Ryman's in the house, Mark. Good morning. Looking forward to a great show today. Good I to bet see George you. wishes he was at the 42 degrees in Dublin right now. Right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. I bet you. All right. We got a question coming up here in a second. <laughs> but first, well, hold on. I'm, I got skipped a little bit here in a few. We got Raymond McGurk pushing purecleanair.com. All right. Well, listen, it is all about sharing knowledge and information. You got something to say, Mark? Uh, no, I'm reading the comments uh, that you're putting up. Uh, a Andrew, right? Andrew is joining us from, from Texas, wishing everyone another great BS Friday with a PH happening live. So Ian and Pam and Jeff, we, we, uh, we, we had a friend contact, um, uh, Webster's Dictionary, and 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 they removed the Fs and replaced them with the PH. So <laughs> our audience always inserts this into their words. Uh, I could be partly responsible. I can't confirm or deny. I can't object to the PH because that's my initials. So, oh yes, I am how <laughs> That's right. You should put P. You should. You should. Yes. It's how you PH. assemble these statements. It's meant to be. <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. I love it. All right, let's keep going through. We got. Uh, we did say hello. Hello to Louise Bazira. Hey, Louise. Thank you. Twitch. Greg Ugaldi, immediate past chairman of NAHB in the house. Everybody, it's always so great it's when Greg Ian joins and, us. And Jeff and Pam, NAHB is the uh, National Association of Home Builders. Uh, gigantic group, uh, training, trading, and advocating from the White House to your house. Uh, Jeff, uh, Craig, you could use that line. But um, <laughs> I, I, from Pamela's uh, statement there about the PH, I also noticed that uh, Ian's last name has uh, the potential of being spelled with a PH, although I'm sure his family members with a PH would... <laughs> Would strike that down. So love it. And love if you didn't smiley. notice, if you didn't notice, Greg Ugaldi is coming to us from Twitch. And we go to Twitch because that's where the young people are, everybody. There, that is where the gaming platforms are, the virtual reality. If the young people aren't going to come to us, we're going to go to them. And it's starting to pick up. We've been getting a lot more people on Twitch lately. Thank you so much for, for allowing us the opportunity to come into your world. That's what I like to say. Love it. All right. Bump, bump, bump. All right, we got a question. Damien Stapleton, go ahead, Mark. Uh, Damien asks, are you using any hemp-based products? And I'm, I'm assuming he's asking our friends, uh, Jeff, Pam, and Ian. So uh, someone want to take that, or maybe you can't divulge your R&D uh, secrets yeah. on, 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 on live, but go for it. Um. Well, it, 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 it's a good question. Um, we have had dealings with hemp um, insulation before. Uh, we don't actually do any ourselves. To a certain extent, although we talk about heat quite a lot in our presentations and our teachings, we're kind of insulation agnostic. Um, we w the company was was basically born on, on styrofoam from Dow. Uh, but as we've grown into membranes and various other things, the styrofoam has become such a small part of our business. Um, we now really only deal with aerogel insulation um, from uh, Boston, we get that from, uh, and space them, we call it. Um, so we don't actually do hemp, um, is a shorter way of what I'm trying to say. And I suppose with that, like you said, Ian, you work with uh, so many other products. So some of your products could be used on certainly one of these uh, hemp filled or hemp hemp block walled in conjunction. Um, and and uh, on our rehearsal the other day, you, you you had a visual for us, Ian, of back in the college days, maybe. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That's 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 the hemp based. Uh, there you go. I love it. We, uh, we have the. Uh, I mean, we've come across hemp quite a lot um, 
in certain buildings, it's, it's a great product. Uh, I like its vapor permeability, so that always works really good for proctors. Um, it's so much easier to build into the construction if you have the space and you have the time and the pl place to do it. So off-site construction, if it's new build, you've got that space and you know what you're doing, uh, works really well. Um, in refurbishment, where we have a lot of refurbishment in the UK, you know, I, I'm in a 19th century house here, uh, stone building. If I put hemp in there, I wouldn't have space for a bed. Um, so, you know, you have to be, you have to balance these things. Um, but yeah, hemp, hemp's a great product. Um, we like it. This you know, the, the hemp products have, have been coming up a lot late, Mark. I mean, not even just on this show, on other shows uh, that we've been doing through the week. Uh, it seems to be starting to make a splash uh, onto the market. And, and I guess some different patents are coming out for different plant-based or hemp-based products that are out there. So I, I do think it's going to start becoming a player in the field. I don't know how big yet or, or how powerful it would be, but I guess it kind of makes sense since there's so much hemp going around these days, hey? Yeah, we had we had so much restrictions uh, put forward uh, after 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 the war. Of course, they were used a lot uh, yeah. in the war efforts. We had so many restrictions around that there there just wasn't a dynamic industry. And now some of the folks that were involved in all those processes, you know, their uh, their information was lost in time because they didn't uh, they didn't log it into these lovely little computers. Right. Um, but now the fact that there's 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 mass production happening, um, I believe it's going to become a household name in 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 various uh, yeah. applications. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, let's go back to saying hello. I think uh, Buzz Holitzer is in the house. What's happening, Buzz? He must be answering to somebody. Plausible deniability. Love it, love it. And I don't know if there's a relationship here, but Kara Proctor watching on my phone from sunny California. Morning team Proctor, Dave, Mark, and everyone. It's it's great to have. Go ahead, Ian. That's the boss. That's the boss. Thank you. All right, Kara, listen, I had some conversation with all of them offline. We got to talk, Kara. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They've been great. I'm just having a good time. All right, listen. So let's get let's get moving back into this here. Greg Ugaldi, Mark had a comment for you. He said, "Excellent, Mark, from your house to the White House." He loved that. Uh, all right, I love it. So we're going to get into this. If you're going to have any questions, please put a Q in front of the question so it's easy for us to find. We're going to put some questions together ourselves. Shall we get back? Uh, should we get back into the presentation? Look like the screen sharing stopped. Let me see what's going on. here. You got the magic wand, Dave. Make it so. Ah, uh, there it is. All right, let's do it. This is particularly important in roofing applications, where air movement out with the heated envelope, for example, in a cold roof, is an important component of minimizing moisture problems. If we also know the internal and external environmental conditions, we can use the thermal resistance and U-value data to produce a temperature gradient throughout the construction. This allows us to predict what the temperature will be at any point within the construction. The environmental conditions can also give us a prediction of the dew point gradient in the construction. This is the temperature at which air loses its ability to retain water vapour and is affected by the thermal and vapour transmission properties of the various layers. These are known as the hydrothermal properties of the materials. If these two lines intersect, then the airborne moisture vapor will condense into liquid water at that point. This condensation can have a range of harmful effects from mold growth to timber rod. So ensuring the element is designed to minimize or eliminate this condensation risk is critical. Guidance on avoiding moisture problems in buildings is detailed in BS 5250, the code of practice for moisture control in buildings which is referenced by the building regulations across the UK and Ireland. One solution provided in BS 5250 is to provide ventilation, ensuring moisture laden air is removed before it can condense. And this can be considered the traditional approach in most cases. Today though, it is not always necessary thanks to advances in both building materials and assessments. 
Vapor permeable construction membranes and vapor control layers can allow designers to effectively manage heat and moisture to optimize dew points and temperature gradients, while air permeable roofing membranes can permit airflow without complex ventilation openings. When using such approaches, it's important that a robust assessment method is in place to verify the design approach taken will be effective. BS5250 gives two methods for determining the condensation risk a simple assessment known as the Glazer method, and a more complex dynamic assessment. The Glazer method, as detailed in EN 13877, provides a quick and simple overview of the moisture transfer characteristics. But the trade-off for this simplicity is that it ignores the effects of more complex factors. It also considers moisture accumulations over a simple annual cycle, potentially leading to long-term issues being missed. To fully account for these additional factors, which also include the effects of external moisture sources and the capacity of material to store and release moisture, a more complex and dynamic approach is necessary. This dynamic assessment is detailed in EN 15026 and necessitates a higher degree of assessor training, alongside a more detailed data set for both the building and the material used. BS5250 details when each type of assessment is considered acceptable but a dynamic calculation incorporating weather effects will always provide a more accurate assessment and may allow optimizations that could not adequately be assessed using the Glazer method. So let's take a look at how the various modern methods of construction affect some of these physical factors. By moving more and more processes off sites and into controlled factory conditions, such methods allow far more precise control of manufacturing tolerances and open up a range of possibilities for optimizing designs. A key principle underpinning modern construction is design for manufacturing and assembly, where the benefits of an understanding of the construction processes can allow the design to be tailored to work within these specific construction parameters. In this type of process, construction membranes of all types have an important role to play as part of a comprehensively engineered solution. The original modern method of construction is the open panel timber frame, where the structural timber frame panels are manufactured off-site and transported to site for erection and finishing. These panels typically comprise load-bearing timber studs with external sheathing boards, and in most cases, an external breather membrane to provide temporary weather protection during transportation and erection. In this type of construction, the majority of additional processes such as fitting insulation, services and additional construction membranes such as vapour control layers happens on site. This still delivers a wind and watertight envelope very quickly compared to traditional brick and block construction, but fitting insulation and services can still take significant time and require a lot of personnel on site. An evolution of the open panel method Closed panel timber frame moves the insulation fitting into the factory, with additional sheathing internally to protect the insulation. While removing the need to fit insulation on site will save some time, the more important benefit is the quality of insulation installation. In this type of panel, gaps around insulation boards can be minimised and sealed, or expanding foam insulation types used to ensure the panels are inherently airtight. Building services are still typically fitted on site, but usually this occurs in a service void, making maintaining air tightness a little easier as less service runs need to penetrate the air barrier layers. Both of these types of panels share a common downside in that the stud work and top and bottom runners of the structural frame penetrate the insulation layers. This means there is a significant degree of cold bridging present that we must account for and counteract, for example, by adding an additional continuous layer of insulation over the frame. This cold bridging can be avoided by using a structural insulated panel or SIP system, where a rigid insulation core is sandwiched between outer layers of structural timber. This creates a strong and adaptable composite panel. Removing the timber stud work from the panels provides a significant boost to the thermal performance. For example, a 140 mm thick insulated panel can achieve a U value below 0.2 while the same thickness of insulation between studs will only achieve 0.3. As well as improving the panel U-values, junctions between panels and at floors and corners are far better insulated, providing side values and giving a more uniform internal temperature distribution. This thermal performance makes SIP systems a great choice for projects where energy efficiency is a primary concern. It's also relatively easy to achieve low rates of air leakage, 
but ensuring the panel joints are well sealed is critical. There are, however, two main downsides of this type of system. Firstly, the positions of windows, doors and other elements must be fixed at the design stage, as the panels are specifically manufactured with later states changes very difficult to accommodate. This necessitates close tolerances for foundations and other processes as even minor on-site adjustments cannot be made on the fly, to the same extent as the traditional timber frame. SIP systems are also heavily reliant on blown insulation foams and heavily engineered timber products like OSB, which might not be a good fit for a more ecologically focused project. Cross-laminated timber or CLT systems use pre-prepared structural timber panels in a similar manner to SIP systems, with door and window locations fixed and the panels supplied and erected in a similar manner. The way the panels and the fabric insulation are manufactured and installed is significantly different, however. In a cross-laminated timber panel, softwood timber planks, typically 30 to 40 mil thick, are glued together to form solid panels. An odd number of layers are glued together at right angles to each other and bonded together under pressure to form solid structural timber panels, similar to large thick sheets of plywood. These panels can in theory be any size and shape, but in practice, manufacturing and transportation considerations tend to limit the size to around three meters by 16 meters. The alternating timber layers give the panels excellent structural properties and being solid, joints can be made at any point. Because of this, panels can be optimized to fit more or less any strength or spanning requirements. Openings for doors and windows can be placed anywhere in the panels, but along with the general layout and structural design of the building, this must be fixed at the point of manufacture and cannot be changed later. In a CLT system, the insulation boards are typically placed on the external side of the structure, resulting in a similar buildup to the type of facade walls found in high-rise constructions. CLT systems also score very highly as regards to sustainability, with timber panels being fully recyclable and wastage being minimised. Each of these construction types result in a very different situation hydrothermally, with traditional timber frame having insulation bridged by the structure, while SIP and CLT constructions have unbridged insulation, but are placed in very different locations. The function of construction membranes is to ensure the properties and performance of each configuration can be balanced, adapted and optimised to fit the project requirements. In each of these frame types, membranes are used slightly differently to complement the building strengths and advantages of the construction type, and we'll move on to take a look at that now. Setting aside gas barriers and other geomembranes, which we will cover in a separate webinar, we can classify most types of membrane according to these basic physical properties. Vapor permeability, air permeability, thermal resistance, UV resistance exposure time, and reaction to fire. Acceptable performance criteria for each application based on these properties is detailed in the BS5250 standard we mentioned earlier. BS5250 is currently in consultation with a new draft, expected pretty soon, but the various definitions have not altered all that much over the years. While these definitions give us a good starting point, there's a lot of specifics that are not included, and we'll take a look at some of those now. As we saw earlier, limiting the air leakage from the heated envelope of a building can have a significant effect on the overall energy performance. The level of allowable air leakage is arguably where the greatest gains can be made simply and for the least cost. Membranes to control air leakage are nothing new and have been part of a low energy construction for a long time. However, where in a construction the air barrier is placed can have a big impact on its effectiveness and also its required performance. Historically, it has been most common to use vapour control layers as air barriers. A simple vapour control layer membrane, such as our Project 500 here, comprises outer layers of polyethylene and a core reinforcing mesh. Polyethylene-based membranes such as this are typically specified for low to medium risk applications where the expected vapour pressure is lower. This would include most domestic housing applications as well as offices, schools and commercial properties. If the vapour pressure is expected to be higher, such as in a swimming pool or a gym, one or more layers of aluminium foil can be added to increase the resistance. Vapour control layers are fitted on the warm side of the insulation 
and prevent moisture vapour reaching colder areas where it may condense into problematic liquid water. And the majority of VCLs will also work as air barriers. The main difficulty in using a VCL as an air barrier is sealing penetrations. On the inside face of the wall, there are penetrations for all surfaces, switches, sockets, pipes and cables, as well as structural elements like floor zones and internal partitions. Sealing these up is by no means impossible. And closed panel SIP and CLT systems that typically place services into a specific service void help mitigate this to an extent. It remains the case though that sealing all this takes time and trades involved in later stages of fit out may not be aware of the location or importance of the air barrier. Failure to meet the design stage air leakage rate can require expensive and complex remedial actions. A solution that reduces these potential failure points can allow the use of far lower air leakage rates more reliably. If we make our air barrier membrane vapour permeable instead, then we have some other options. Air barriers like our wrap-type membrane prevent air leakage whilst remaining open to the passage of moisture vapour. Wrap-type has an airtight vapour permeable film core with outer layers of spun bond polypropylene and a vapour permeable adhesive backing. The vapour permeable adhesive allows for a faster and more durable installation to most common substrates, whilst making it as simple as possible to ensure a continuous airtight layer. The outer layers not only protect the film core from damage, but are also hydrophobic, allowing the membrane to provide temporary weather protection. This combination of air tightness, vapour permeability and weather protection mean that this type of membrane can be located more or less anywhere within the construction, even placing it between insulation layers if required. This is particularly useful in SIP or CLT constructions, where the membrane can protect the panels in transit. Then additional layers of thermal insulation can be added on site without the risk of trapping moisture within these insulation layers. Being able to rely on achieving a low rate of air leakage can allow the level of fabric insulation to be substantially reduced. So, can we expand this external principle to other areas of the building envelope? In roofing, underlays are defined in BS5250 as being type HR or high resistance or type LR, low resistance. The proposed revision of BS5250 adds a third category, APLR or air permeable LR. We'll discuss APLR membranes shortly, but for now, let's focus on HR and LR. An HR underlay is very similar to a vapour control layer in that it will not allow the passage of air, water or vapour. This makes HR underlays great at providing secondary weather protection, but because they cannot let vapour through, any moisture in the roof must be removed by ventilation. There's nothing wrong with this approach, but it can be complex to ensure the roof is properly ventilated, with good airflow throughout all parts of the roof. The openings themselves can also lead to problems with water ingress, if not correctly specified and installed. The alternative to this is to use an LR underlay, which can permit vapour to pass through the underlay. The wrap type membrane we discussed earlier can be used in this application, provided the insulation follows the pitch of the roof in what is called a warm roof. When it is used on the walls and roofs of a building, this type of membrane can be wrapped around the eaves onto the walls and over the ridge to provide a continuous airtight layer. This provides a simple, durable and effective solution to ensure good control of both air and moisture movement. Where this type of membrane is less appropriate though, is in what is known as a cold roof application, where there are large voids such as loft spaces between the insulation and the underlay. In this type of roof, it is recommended to provide a ventilation opening at the ridge, only to allow any buildup of vapour in the voids to escape. This solution is not ideal though, as apart from combining the higher cost of vapour permeable membranes with the cost and complexity of ventilation systems, it can introduce a pressure drop in the roof drawing more moisture from the internal space. This is particularly important in re-roofing an existing or historic property where replacing the ceiling may not be possible or desirable. Luckily though, another type of membrane allows us to engineer out that problem. In an air open underlay, the APLR type membrane we mentioned earlier, the airtight film core of the LR membrane is replaced with a melt blown fiber layer. These fibers are like a microscopic plate of spaghetti with very small pores and voids throughout. This micropore structure allows the passage of both air and vapour, but not liquid water. 
Combined with the hydrophobic outer layers, this gives us a membrane capable of providing temporary weather protection without compromising the movement of air and vapour. In our cold roof application, this means that there is a degree of air movement through those problematic large voids, which provides a boost to the transport of moisture vapour. This combination of air and vapour permeability makes the formation of condensation in the roof space practically impossible under most circumstances. This airflow allows us to remove any requirement to provide ventilation and also means the ceiling does not require any specific measures to be taken. It might still be necessary to consider air leakage, but this flexibility gives designers alternative approaches to consider without any risk of roof space condensation. So, we can see from these examples the importance of considering what balance of air and vapour transmission properties are appropriate for a given project. Although air and vapour movement are the most common applications for membranes, other properties can also have a big impact on building performance. The next type of commonly used construction membrane is the reflective membrane. These can be either vapour tight or vapour permeable, but have in common a reflective surface, typically comprising either a layer of aluminium foil or an aluminium coating. This reflective surface alters a property called the surface emissivity of the material, which affects the ability of the membrane to either absorb or emit radiant heat. When used next to an airspace in a construction, this has the same effect as adding insulation. So this performance is usually quantified by way of a thermal resistance or R value. While the R values associated with reflective membranes are typically quite low compared to insulation boards, they require no additional thickness to be added. This makes reflective membranes a great option where only a minor upgrade to performance is required. For example, as a trade-off to performance against glazing, but any big change to the over buildup is undesirable. In our example here, our base structural insulated panel gives us a wall U value of 0.2. If we add a reflective breather membrane to the outside, this will drop to 0.17, and adding a reflective vapour control layer will take it down to 0.16. Another important membrane property to consider is how it reacts to fire, determined by a single burning item test and classified according to EN13501. This method exposes the membrane to an ignition source and classifies the membrane according to the energy and heat released, as well as the production of smoke and flaming droplets. These effects are then combined into a simple classification. Although membranes rarely make a significant contribution to the development of a fire, some circumstances, such as high-rise residential buildings, require a membrane to be less reactive. The minimum standard for these applications is usually Class B1, S3, D0. Achieving a Class B rating does not, however, mean a membrane will not react to fire. Most such membranes will simply shrink away from the ignition source or reduce the amount of energy available to feed the fire, but some, such as our fire shield shown here, have a different reaction. Fire shield comprises a polypropylene core which is airtight and vapour permeable over a spun bond carrier similar to many other membranes. Where it differs is the presence of a specialist graphite-based outer layer, which reacts to fire in a similar manner to intumescent coatings, frothing up to protect the layers underneath. While this reaction prevents the membrane achieving class A rating, when compared side by side to another class B rated material, the difference in reaction is striking. It's therefore important to look beyond the simple rating to consider the full scope of the material's performance and that of the system and installation as a whole. Particularly when considering vapour permeable membranes, enhancing the fire performance beyond class B can impact the vapour permeability, so it's critical to ensure the performance is up to the required specification. For vapour control layers, this is less of an issue. Membranes such as our Procheck A2 VCL use a combination of aluminium and glass fibres to deliver high resistance to vapour and low emissivity surface, while substantially limiting the reaction to fire. This composition also makes such membranes extremely durable and resistant to tearing and other damages. The final type of membrane to consider is the variable resistance vapour control layer. This type of membrane is comprised of layers of specialist films which can vary their properties in response to different environmental factors. Membranes like our Procheck Adapt have higher vapour resistance in the winter months when condensation risks are at their highest, but 
can open up to allow greater transmission of moisture vapour in summer. In this way, such membranes can limit the ingress of moisture vapour when needed, but can facilitate the inward drying of the construction when conditions are more favourable. Okay, listen, uh, if everybody unmute themselves so we can get back to here, we're gonna go straight to some comments and conversation. Uh, Mark, listen, I know we've been back and forth in the comments. I, I completely agree with you, Mark. I think that um, this video has so much information. It has so many visualizations that really help somebody who doesn't understand the general conversation visualize it and see it. And that's what we're all about on the show is making it, simplifying it so we can break it down and get more people involved in what we do. And uh, I 100% I, I think we have to have another show, but on the on the next show, uh, I, think, I think we really break down each section of these different products that you have and how their applications are and really, really put some practical conversation to them as well. What do you it's think, Mark? It's going to be a thirty-six hour show, so bring your Gatorade, bring 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 your eggs and tortillas. Listen, we'll just do it live. We'll do it live from Las Vegas. I think they give you IV therapy out there. You can just get hooked up to some IVs, and we can just keep going. Pump the oxygen in the room. You guys covered sips. You covered uh, cross laminated timber, air air, air, air control, vapor right. control, to vent, to not to vent, hot roof, cold roof. Uh, the, 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 the climate change, the fire and the testing, uh, it, it, it was explosive. Uh, I took, I took over probably four dozen photographs and I've seen this three times already. <laughs> I, I love it. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to Nigel's question first. And there's another question, uh, as well that we'll, we'll ask here. Um, let me pull it up. Nigel has asked, uh, Ian, I wonder if Ian has got the update of BS5250 sorted yes, yet. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, even Nigel, um, Nigel's well known to Proctor's, um, a strong supporter of Proctor products. Uh, when he worked with the NHBC, now he retired. Um, yeah, great question. BS525 was very important. Uh, control of moisture in buildings. Uh, we've been going through it quite a lot. Uh, I chair the wall section, um, but uh, it is a long document to go through and we've been through quite a lot of comment resolution meetings, of which there's been 11 three hour meetings uh, so far. But we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, it should be ready end of June. 11 three hour meetings. So, so if you did that nonstop, you were done in a day and a half, which is great. Uh, I, I, I want I want our rock and roll fans to not confuse uh, the, the BS 5250 with the Van Halen 5150. It, 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 it's, it's much different. I love it. I love it. All right, we got another question here. Uh, Damien Stapleton, is Brexit impacting on deliveries to Ireland? I, I think you're the best for this one as well, because I would just say Brexit's impacting everything at the moment. It's a good question. Um, yes, for us to, yeah. to, to sell into Ireland is, um, is difficult. Um, because the paperwork and, and certifications and things like that, we're getting through it. Um, it's providing challenges, but we're, we're providing our customers the products they need. Um, but it comes with its own challenges, which keeps us keeps us going. Keeps you on your toes, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a well said statement, Ian, because while while we communicate in the AEC and manufacturing community globally and sharing uh, logistically and the paperwork and the 8.4 thousand certifications uh, of redundancy that's out there. Um, people want to know how to expedite it and get it done faster. Uh, we invite the certification bodies to uh, come come together with the same camaraderie as the manufacturers and the AEC community. Um, 
We don't need redundancy. We need proper housing. Spot on. Spot on. All right, here you go, Mark. Take this one. Good, good supporter of our industry, Jerry McCahey. Speaking of Ireland, and Tecra uh, is a strong foundation there and uh, incredible work in, in California. Uh, Mr. Mr. And Tecra himself asks, we used to deal with Proctor back in Ireland, the UK. Great company, great people. Uh, so he didn't ask anything, but I think he said uh, that you're all welcomed in California and, and he'd love to, to sit at the table with you. I love it. Love it. <laughs> yep. If, if you don't know Jerry McKay, everybody should know Jerry. Such a, he, he's a, he's a loving guy, man. I'm telling you, he's got a big heart and, uh, he, he's doing, he's doing amazing things with Integra here in this comp, uh, in this country. And, uh, you know, his history in, in offsite, uh, manufacturing construction with his dad, uh, God bless his dad, right? Passed away recently, but he was a leader in this industry in a big, big way. The, the, the integration, as you all know, a process, right? Yeah. It's not just products. It's in, in integration of process and panelize was, was a portion of what you guys brought forward. And again, that shows the unity and the collaboration that all of us share so well. So bless right. your hearts. Yeah, for sure. And listen, everybody, if you're out there, let's hit that like and share button. And Louise Bezerra, uh, if I said that right, Bezerra, can these videos be shared? Yes, they can. This is a great question. Uh, Jen will put in the comments. You can pass it, 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 grab the URL, but just go to our YouTube channel. In fact, not only can they can be shared, we have everything broken down in the pay playlist. So BS Friday has a playlist of all the videos. You can share that playlist or each individual video whenever you like. The only requirement that we have is you become a subscriber. That's it. That's the only requirement. It doesn't cost you anything. Just hit subscribe and we won't spam you with nothing, I promise. And, and, and Luis, that's why we're here. Uh, Jeff has shared, uh, after I believe our second meeting, Jeff, you shared uh, so many videos that my, my laptop crashed. Um, and, and, and I crashed watching them because they were extensive playlists. Uh, so I think Proctor, A. Proctor and Dave Cooper Live are, are actually in strong competition as is who has the, 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 the most hours on YouTube. And, and I invite you both to continue to compete oh. at that great and epic feat. Man, dude, they, they started in the 1600s. I mean, they got a head start, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's, there, there's actually some original uh, uh, depictions on the stone wall of Ian's house of, of the original membranes. I love it. I love it. Uh, all right. We got Joel McIntosh. Hey, Joel, thanks for joining us from YouTube. We got quite a few YouTubers out there joining us today. So please let us know where you're from. We always appreciate when you I comment. Guess he's from northern Idaho. Uh, yeah. I didn't know Idaho had a had a had a, a logistic uh, deviation. I know we have yeah. North Carolina and 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 such, but I guess we have North Idaho. So as Hello. an American, I'm always learning about geography. We we are heading to Idaho in the next couple of weeks, Mark. I don't know if you know this. We're heading to Idaho. We're heading to Utah. Um, we will be live streaming into all the universities across the country, NAHB. Uh, uh, we're doing some collaboration work with them and they're sponsoring some shows. So it's going to be a great opportunity to bring the young people into our conversation and students. So Joel, keep an eye out for us. You might see the uh, Dave Cooper live uh, bus heading down the street. I left the breadcrumbs, Dave, through through Utah and Idaho and Montana. I left the breadcrumbs from my last trip. So just follow them. You'll, you'll I just I need to follow you to find out where you found good signals and where to avoid. <laughs> well, I think I think you found out where I had a bad signal. Yeah. So uh, Ian and Pam and Jeff, last week's show, uh, I was popping in and 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 Dave is running the control tower and he's like, "We don't have Mark." Uh, and I what it it uh, 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 uh. so uh, bless your heart, Dave. It was a phenomenal show. We did. We did. But you know what? We always had it. We, we had a very talented fill in for that show that that stuck around for most of it. So it was a good show. Good show. All right. Here we go. Stuart Ruda, I think Ruddy or Rudy. So can you confirm the U value performances declared on slide for reflective membranes with SIP panels? 
I can do that one if you want. Um, we, we don't, we probably couldn't give you a definitive answer on that because it will depend on the type of ventilation used in that SIPS panel, um, whether you've got an internal reflective with a cavity and also what the external um, facade is, whether it's like a, a ventilated rain rain screen cladding or a, a brick cladding because that can all impact on the overall performance but if you've got a specific wall drop us an email and, and we can have a look and, and give you some advice on your specifics um, we use it depends a lot here um, because it does depend everything we do depends on a lot of different variables so drop us an email and, and we can rustle something up for you the you know, wonderful that's a, distinction you gave yeah. uh, in uh, Pam, and I know you taught Ian over the years about it depends and when to use that. Uh, the, the 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 fact is, and and this might happen for 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 your clients' projects is so often in North America, people say I have this R value for this insulation, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're off to the races because that's what the the, the little marketing thing on the product said, mm -hmm. but. Uh, so often uh, our friends in Europe do the complete U values of the assembly and that that delineation that you gave of the the panel and what what it is exactly composed of and what goes to it, that allows for that U value. And um, when that gets adopted uh, by other folks, and it, it, it truly takes a great level of experience and education to get there. When that gets adopted, that's when we understand it. We call it the digital twin, right? Before the people are into the space, how they will be experiencing the space. So that question and how you answer it, Pam, is epic. And we encourage everyone to send that email and, and, and to take that process, our values are starting point, your value is your assembly. Yeah, I mean, it's also the R values is, is, is fine, but we work a lot over here on key values or the, the lambda value. So it's actually, it's not taking into thickness because quite often you might have a really good R value, but it's on something that's like half a meter thick. But if you look at the actual K value, the lambda value, you can have something like our air gel, which is really low performance at 0 0.015 compared to mineral wool, which might be up at 0 0.04. So it's like three times less efficient for the same thickness. And people don't sometimes understand that that nuance between it, which is really important to take into account when you're comparing R values. Right. And that R value at one thickness does not mean because you double the thickness, you have doubled the R value. That is a marketing ploy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like U values. It's a lot of diminishing returns. It starts off really, you know, really poor, but a little bit of ventilation. Wow, you've got a huge drop. But all of a sudden, you start ending up adding centimeters and centimeters or inches and inches of insulation, and it makes no difference to your U value. So, yeah, diminishing yeah. returns. Awesome. Well, this awesome. kind of comes back, Mark, to, you know, how much does a bag of groceries cost? It's the same thing, right? It depends what's inside the bag of groceries. <laughs> so in, in house buildings, the same way. It, it, I, I love that. That's a part of your natural speech now, Dave. Um, it's, just, uh, it's, it's brilliant. I think I think you guys probably have met Dan Whitmore over the years. He he coined he coined that phrase. He did. Right. And uh and boy, if we don't try to use it uh, more than he does, right? It's uh, just like it depends, right? You, 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 you have to, you have to look at what's going on, and there's not a silver bullet. Keep chasing that silver bullet, uh, but there's not one yet. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, uh, man, does time fly? Right? Go ahead, Ian. Sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to add one thing on the. On the presentation when I was watching it there, um, we talk about the, the cold side and the warm side of the insulation and the warm side and the cold side of the envelope. Um, now, I don't know, um, that's easy for us to, to, to recognize what the cold side is in the UK. Um, as I said to Mark the other day, we're lucky in, in the UK, we've only got one climate. Um, generally wet and cold, um, apart from maybe July the 6th and 7th, uh, where it's sunny. Yeah. Uh, but for the rest of the time, it's, it's cold and wet. 
in, yeah. in the UK. We, we, what we found when we were in America and, and started selling in America was we realized that in the north it could be quite cold, but in Florida, um, it's really quite nice most of the year. And somewhere in the middle, there must be a, it sometimes is, sometimes not, a warm side and a cold side. So um, it's worthy of, of noting that for your, your viewers that have listened today, when we're talking about the warm side and the cold side, we're talking about northern European climates. Um, of what the cold side is, is the outside, and the warm side is the, the inside. Inside, yeah. And, and Ian, as a as a as a as a as a person who's grown up in the Midwest, we've had you know, uh, and and Dave's experienced this as well. Uh, you know, we've had 45, 55 degree Fahrenheit days, and and the next day it's minus two, right? The next day. Yeah. So uh, when people say what well, climate zone, I say let me look at my watch, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I, I think that's really important to point out. And what you guys have done is you have put together systems for the different climate zones. This is, I think, what makes you very, very powerful. Prior to the show and we were talking, I mean, you even have off-site construction catalogs. And we talk a lot about DFMA these days. We talk about a lot, you know, like Mark said, the digital twin and the value of all of this. And I think what's really great about what A. Proctor has done is you, 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 you've, you've simplified the information in these different categories for people to really grasp it. You know, one of the things we struggle with in our industry here in the United States, different than where you're at, is, you know, what category are we in? How do we use vapor barriers? How do we use passive house standards in these different climate zones? And what are the products we need? Because it's not the same for every climate zone. And it's different. And, and the fact that you have taken the next step to help categorize and organize this information to make it easier for people out there that want to build better, that want to use better products, build healthier homes uh, is, is super commendable. I mean, like Mark said, we could do a 36 hour show uh, just on all these different parts and pieces. Yeah. And the part I hope the audience never, never misses is the reason you go to the experts is they, they, they laid it forward about the, the air and the vapor, but there was direct correlation with the ventilation standards involved. And uh, so while all of us are, are searching to, to, to capture the air and vapor correctly, we're, we're also leaning forward on the ventilation necessary from uh, oftentimes, you know, the ERV or the HRV, depending on yeah. where you're going. So that's continuously running. When, well, none of us are saying sail up a box and sit inside. We're not saying that. We're saying uh, take the steps, do it correctly, and accompany that with the, with the proper um, uh, mechanical team. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, listen, everybody, we had a wonderful, wonderful time and a wonderful show. We actually had two videos, but we always do this, Mark. We get so excited about everything. We put so much on the plate, but you just never know how it's going to go. Um, each one of you, Pam, Ian, Jeff, I, I, if you want to both, all of us, just leave us with one thing that you think is the most important thing, whether it's personal or with A. Proctor, what, 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 what's your one thing that we can leave the audience with? And when we come back and have you on the show here, which is going to happen, we'll solidify this right away. Um, we can jump into those one things, maybe. Go ahead, Jeff, you take the show. What do you, what's your one thing when it comes to a proctor or a personal? Um, I think given the circumstances we're living in, I think just be kind to people. It's, it's good just to, to, to care and uh, to be aware, to be kind. You know what? It's a global audience now. And this this pandemic, I think, has brought the world together tighter because of it. We spend time. I would never I wouldn't be sitting across the table from you right now. Right, Mark? So I, 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 Jeff, Jeff's kindness is why we've been able to have so many conversations. Uh, he pops into my email with his welcoming introductions. And then you always are introducing <laughs> me to something new. That kindness is contagious. Yeah. And 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 we can't overstep it. It's the same as bringing muffins to your neighbor next door. You're not sure if they need them, but you know they're going to enjoy them. 
That's right. Muffins or apple pie. That's the American way, right? I love it. All right, Pam, you go ahead. What is it? Yeah, definitely very much. One thing I've learned throughout my work here at Proctors is you cannot take anything in isolation. You have to look at everything together. A building's not just an element, it's a sum of it. You have to look at everything holistically. And Jeff, I'm looking for muffins next time we're back in the office. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Jeff, Jeff uh, everybody wants muffins, Jeff. All right. So <laughs> Jeff, Jeff has become the muffin guy. Now I'm just <laughs> We usually share an office, so you know I'm 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 holding out for them. <laughs> and, and you know what? You'll get them with a smile. You'll get them with a smile because Jeff, that's his one thing. Everybody should be kind, <laughs> kind, and a little bit more financially broke because now you got to buy muffins. All right, Ian, you're up. Yeah, I think uh, I think my mantra is, uh, and I get uh, a hard time for the word depends. Um, I think. Everything depends, and really, it's all a balance. Um, heat, air, moisture, it's all a balance. And whatever you're doing, you've got to consider, just the same as Pam said there, like holistically looking at things, it's the balance of heat, air, and moisture. Get that right, you take the time, you'll have a good building. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Will Jones says, good job, guys. <laughs> Damien Stapleton says, another great show. Thanks to you all. And the Buzz Hollowitzer, be nice or leave. <laughs> I'm with you there, Buzz. Be nice or get out. That's it. There's, there's no room. There's no room for being mean and rude and all that fun stuff. Nope. All right. It's a welcoming community and and the collaboration you you all have shown over the years, and the outreach and trainings that you give long before you even have a client. Is, is is a standard that I hope other companies strive to get to. And uh, I, uh, I'm particularly thankful for each of your voices and what you what you provide to the building sector. And I hope that each of our uh, our guests today have uh, have 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 taken down your names and have found you through the, the tags and connections that Dave and then I put on LinkedIn because this conversation is going to keep going uh, uh, in the weeks following and you're sharing. So welcome. So bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So down in the ticker, you'll see to learn more proctorgroup.com. Go there. There is a ton of information. So make sure you go through all the top URL links and, and scroll through and see. And when you click into them, you will actually will find other stuff like catalogs. And uh, it's super, super exciting. You guys have uh, been wonderful. Uh, Raymond McGurk says, doing Scotland proud, Team Proctor. So, Raymond, thank you for that as well. And thank you for joining us, Raymond. Mark, that's a wrap, man. That's another BS Friday in the books. We learned a whole ton of information. You three are amazing. We're going to have to bring you back onto the show. And I think really, I think we could actually have a show on each one of those products and dive into the specifics of how each one of those products work. Quite honestly, Mark, I think so it's 48 I, weeks. It's 48 good. weeks. Uh, <laughs> gear up for it. Uh, Dave, are you having coffee tomorrow? I, I, I will be having coffee with Dave. You wouldn't know it, but I am on a trout fishing trip right now. I'm <laughs> staying in a tent in the woods in a camper. Uh, the hotel in the local town was kind enough to let me use their business center. So um, it may be a little fuzzy, the video signal you get out. My mind might be a little fuzzy, too, or... We are drinking some uh, beer around the fire. I have to tell you, it's kind of nice and, and catching some trout and just taking a break. Because if everybody doesn't know it, we just finished up last week a full year of uh, streaming live. We've been live six days a week. We never missed a day for one full year doing nothing but talking about offsite construction, building better, building science. Uh, and uh, so I took a little bit of a break this week. And uh, we'll be live moving forward Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, Mark. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're going to do some special events on those days. Uh, and hey, guys, tune in. Next week's a big week. We kick off our uh, live show with NAHB and the student chapters and all the universities at Tavistock in Orlando, Florida at Lake Nona. They, they, they have autonomous driving cars there. This is going to be a cool one. So, so BS Fridays came about a bit later. Dave hit yep. his mark and, and, and Jennifer and all the people in the background that pull it off. So the 52 week is a great accomplishment today, Pam, Ian, Jeff, this was episode 48. 
Uh, we have Shannon, Ilka, and Angela doing Silver Green on episode 49. And episode 50, Dave, is your friend, Prudence. Prudence is back. I love yep. Prudence. Prudence, so, Prudence. Uh, thank you for being here. I'll join Dave uh, on coffee tomorrow. Jeff, Ian, Pam, continued success and look for that email with the invitation back to Dave Cooper Live. Yeah, and also, Mark, you, you failed to mention on your 50th week, you have to name each and every show and every guest by memory. That's the 52nd week. That's the 52nd oh, we're doing week. The 50. Okay, I was giving you a little bit of a break. You want to go 52? Yeah. Add it we, to it. We, we, have, we have Russ Vagan, uh, you know, iconic gentleman, episode 51. And someone by the name of Zach Semke. Hmm. Zach Semke. On episode 52. So uh, it's easier for me to remember, remember the episodes coming up, but the episode's going backwards. Uh, I'm going to rely on Dave to help me with that. Yeah, we may have to make some cheater banners. We won't tell anybody. All right, everybody, listen. This was another episode of Dave Cooper Live. BS Friday with the Mark Bear Naked Willie, where we talk all building science. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And it is on Friday. And if you don't know how to spell Friday, it is spelled P-H-R-I-D-A-Y on this show. Just so you know, if you're new and you're turning, tuning in, it stands for Passive House because we all know what it means amongst us, but we're growing and we're bringing more people in. So it was a wonderful show. Pam, Ian, Jeff, Mark, don't go anywhere. We'll come right back to you after the outro. And everybody else out there, have a wonderful weekend. And please join me tomorrow, Coffee with Dave. It always happens around nine-ish. I say nine-ish, it's just, uh, it's my Saturday. And this is just what we do. It's a relaxed conversation. All right, everybody. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon. Bye now. Bye, everybody.